Greetings to all the learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. The topic of analysis is studying international relations pre-Westphalia and Westphalia. Dear learners, in this lecture we shall try to understand the study of international relations with the focus on issues of state and sovereignty keeping in mind the Treaty of Westphalia. We shall be debating the issues concerning pre-Westphalia and Westphalian global order. In this lecture, we shall attempt to discuss the meaning of international relations and explain the importance of study of international relations. We shall explain the significance of peace of Westphalia with reference to the study of international relations. We shall elaborate on features of pre-Westphalian global order and discuss important aspects of the Treaty of Westphalia. To begin with, how do we define the study of international relations? A layman's understanding of the idea of international relations and the study of it is study of relations across boundaries of nation states. Today, the idea that is nation state and the study of one nation to other nation interaction has a very wide campus. Global governance today has both state as well as non-state actors. Further, when we try to understand the study of international relations, we have to keep into account that issues of foreign policy, development studies, ecology, sustainability, international business, international security, diplomacy, amongst others, all have a bearing on the study of international relations. This brings us to the next question that is always there in the mind of any learner. Why should we study international relations? Now, dear learners, as we understand the challenges of today, namely military issues, security concern, issues of food security, health security, economic security, climate change amongst others and look towards the future like technology driving our lives, rise of robotics in health, use of artificial intelligence, rise of new forms of non-traditional security dimensions. The challenges of today and the future are related to each other. Further, we are living in a global world wherein because of technology there has been shrinking of the ideas of time and the space. Within this aspect of the global world where integration, interdependence defines many realities of contemporary times, the study of international relations gives us comprehensive skills to understand the issues concerning the challenges of today and future. Now, as we are debating the aspect of international relations study, we will now look at the history of international relations and for that, dear learners, we will try to have a look at the evolution. Now, earlier when we look at international relations, it was seen as a sub-discipline of political science. However, when we look at the present scenario, international economics, study of international law, world history, all of them have a bearing with reference to issues, concepts, history of international relations. In 1919, it was offered, international relations was offered as an undergraduate major by Abbotsford University in Wales. So herein, Looking at these aspects, namely, some people perceive it as a sub-discipline of political science, whereas when we look at realities of contemporary times, IR has a bearing on international economics, law, history, anthropology, amongst others. So, here and within these divergent perspectives, it is a sub-field within political science department. Then, secondly, there is a view that it is an independent academic discipline and then there is another divergent perspective that it is a multidisciplinary discipline. So, here we get that 
right from being a subfield that we get within political science to being an independent academic discipline to being a multidisciplinary field of study there are various perspectives that are there with reference to study of international relations however dear learners when we try to delve into study of ir it is the state which is the most important unit of analysis we all know that the idea of nation state also has various dimensions in its definitions various theorists have debated on nationalism nation state from different perspectives so but the most important idea here is that the westphalian system that we get with reference to treaty of westphalia 1648 this gives us one of the fundamental pillars of our understanding with reference to nation state in the study of international relations this brings us to the important aspect that what do we mean by the treaty of westphalia or the connotation of peace of westphalia dear learners when we look at the world history peace of westphalia signifies series of peace treaties signed between may and october 1648 in the westphalian city of osnabrück and munster the peace of westphalia is significant as we look into several important aspects from history that is namely it ended the 30 years war and the 80 years war when we look at the peace of westphalia the negotiation therein are often called as congress of westphalia Let's have a look at some important facts concerning Congress of Westphalia. The Congress of Westphalia, dear learners, began in 1642 and lasted another four years until the end of Thirty Years' War in 1648. When we look at some important inputs that have been presented in several historical textbooks and historical archives, that is, there were several diplomatic representatives from. different entities who were present there at the congress of westphalia now as we are looking at these facts of congress of westphalia presenting important negotiations ending the 30 years war in 1648 diplomatic representatives different entities were present the remarks of wingdom abuse are very important to be quoted here and we quote from his work that no question that had ever before received a diplomatic settlement had been of such far reaching importance or had been settled with the concurrence of so many powers so here we get that the peace of westphalia the treaties of westphalia indeed paved a way for a new order in international relations now this brings us that what were the issues in the pre westphalian era once again we look towards historical perspectives dear learners in the pre westphalian era what we see here is that when we look at the map of europe it was divided into empires kingdoms confederations the idea of nation state or the popular narrative of state sovereignty was missing and the significance then of the peace of westphalia the congress of westphalia therein becomes important because it signified an international effort to solve a conflict using diplomatic methods in this once again it is significant because all sides participated and most important when we see that there was no no dominant nation simply dictating policy so here in as an international effort to solve conflict and also rectifying some of the defects or some of the missing aspects in the pre westphalian order namely the missing of sovereignty with reference to the conduct of relations from between one nation to the other when we are understanding treaty of westphalia dear learners you must also have a look at nature of war and its impacts and uses before 1648 uh 
war was accepted as means of solving conflicts later after the treaty no state was allowed to be destroyed and compensation was to be awarded to those states that gave up strategically advantageous positions then with the aspect of war and respecting the space of the other state what we get here is that one has to read it how diplomacy and negotiation could be used as alternatives to war the impact of peace talks that is power in the europe had become decentralized and this is very important for diplomacy when we look into some of the academic research and inputs it is often pointed out that decentralization of power that was present, that was there as a consequence as a impact of the peace talks it is very important for international diplomacy and this forms the basis for much of modern international law and professional diplomacy so here in once again as we are trying to study international relations with respect to pre westphalia and westphalia so pre westphalia the provinces were under the rule of the holy roman emperor in the westphalian order the idea of state sovereignty was given prevalence pre westphalia the focus was on the big picture of empire confederations kingdoms in the westphalian uh, system the focus was on the state and the focus was on the idea of sovereignty so the westphalian system that is it signified a global system more based on the principle of international law now what do these what does it connect each state has sovereignty over its territory and domestic affairs to the exclusion of all external powers next principle of non interference in others countries domestic affairs next each state no ma and once again we all know geography and territory is very important in international relations but in the westphalian system each state no matter how large or small it is equal in international relations so in the westphalian system it's a global system based on the principle of international law each state has sovereignty over its territory and domestic affairs it follows principles of non interference in other countries domestic affairs and each state is equal in international law the westphalian model implies therefore when we read through it principles of legal equality and autonomy second non intervention in the affairs of other states further when we are trying to talk about sovereignty sovereignty that is supreme authority within a territory sovereignty entails hierarchy within the state sovereignty implies external autonomy for the state when we look at from the domain of political theory sovereignty is a substantive term designating supreme legitimate authority when we look at it from international law sovereignty it is the exercise of power by a state it is this sovereignty that is a defining hallmark of distinction of the pre westphalian order and the westphalian global system further when we talk about article 2.7 of the un charter which also talks about sovereignty we quote from the article 2.7 of the un charter united nations charter that is nothing contained in the present charter shall authorize the united nations to intervene in matters which are essentially within the domestic jurisdiction of any state or shall require the members to submit to such matters to settlement under the present charter but this principle shall not prejudice the application of enforcement measures under chapter 7 further when we are looking at state with reference to international law so state in the westphalian system it has a defined territory population government and capacity to enter into relations with other state 
further the state should not interfere into the domestic interests of the other member states. Dear learners, as we are debating on studying international relations with respect to pre-Westphalia and the Westphalian perspective, we take reference to a very important work to elaborate further on our arguments. We take reference to David Croxton and Anushka Tischer work that is The Peace of Westphalia, a Historical Dictionary. The work is from Greenwood Press 2002. Now in this book, you know when we go by the various arguments in this book, we get the sense that no doubt the Peace of Westphalia was a pivotal event in the early modern history. The Congress of Vienna paved way to our contemporary international relations, international political system. Once again, the Congress of Vienna, if you go by the important arguments presented in the book, that is this Congress of Vienna paved way to our contemporary international political system. There was peace in Germany after the 30 years war and it created a new order in Europe. Besides that, it set the standard for future diplomacy and negotiation. This is what makes Peace of Westphalia, a when we look at it from, you know, from this very important book, The Peace of Westphalia, a historical dictionary, as very important with reference to issues of international relations. Further, when we are talking about Westphalia, pre-Westphalia and the Westphalian global system, another important work to understand the critical perspective of it comes from Benno Teschke's and Francois Flahon's work that is the myth of 1648 class geopolitics and the making of modern international relations. Now in this work dear learners Benno Teschke points out that uh, you know this work attempts to reinterpret the making of modern international relations from the 8th to the 18th century. This work makes a very important argument that there is a need to look at social property relations. This work points out that one must look at the analysis of long term interaction of class conflict, economic development and international rivalry. Further, this work also points out that there is a need to look at modern international relations study and the issues of rise of capitalism as well. For the dear learners, another alternate perspective with reference to sovereignty and issues of uh, studying IR with reference to pre-Westphalia and the Westphalian system comes from A. Ossianders article that is sovereignty, international relations and the Westphalian myth in international organization. Now this work points out that estates of Europe did conclude treaties and alliances with foreign actors earlier also. This treaty when we do you know delve deeper into the peace treaties concluded at the Congress of Westphalia the argument that the scholar is trying to make here is that these treaties restricted the rights of princes. Another alternate view that comes from the work of P. Sturk, that is the Westphalian model and sovereign equality in review of international studies. In this work, uh, there is this argument that peace was restorative, peace was not innovative. So once again what we see here is that the idea of when we look at the pre-Westphalian system and the Westphalian system with reference to study of international relations, it is very important. When we look at the is important aspect that is system of states or international society comprising sovereign state entities possessing the monopoly of force within their mutually recognized territories. Further, Relations between state in the pre-Westphalian and the Westphalian system as we are trying to understand, they are conducted through formal diplomatic ties between heads of states and government and international law and this consists of treaties made and also they are uh, you know, broken also by the sovereign entities. The Westphalian system implied a separation of the domestic and the international sphere. The Westphalian order implies that states may not intervene 
in the domestic affairs of the another. Further, it differentiates the modern state from the earlier models, namely empires, kingdoms, amongst others. So, dear learners, as we try to understand international relations from the perspective of Westphalia, uh, pre Westphalia and the Westphalia, we must understand that no doubt state is the most important actor in international relations. And to understand statehood, it is sovereignty which is the fundamental pillar, which is the most important concept in international relations. To understand state sovereignty, we have to take reference to the Peace of Westphalia, the Treaty of Westphalia, to understand it how the aspect of studying of international relations, they were built on that non-interference in domestic affairs of another state, differentiating the modern state system from earlier models like confederation, kingdoms, empires and look respecting the territorial integrity and unity of the other states. So, it is essential to have this comparative contrast with respect to the pre-Westphalian and the Westphalian global system in order to have better understanding of the study of international relations. We hope the lecture presented to you significant inputs and insights. We look forward to positive encouraging feedback from you all. Thank you very much.